I spent a lifetime trying to right the wrongs of the past. As if fighting crime would bring my parents back. You actually did it. I can't imagine what you've been through. I love you, Monkey. <laughs> you lost both parents in one day. Barry! I went back in time to save my parents. But instead, I completely broke the universe. If you went back and changed the past, this world must die. You changed the future. Do you know what this symbol stands for? It means hope, right? I will help you fight Zod. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Struggle Session. Yes, we are back in the building. I am Leslie Lee III. As always, I'm joined by Mr. Hollywood, Jack Allison. Here I am in, in the big Hollywood sign city. I don't know if we have a name for the city, but we're in the big Hollywood sign city over here. What's happening, Leslie? The, the place where dreams are made, mm-hmm. Jack. I'm so excited for today's episode because y'all have turned the dream machine back on. It's yes. been off for a while. It was we were very low on content, struggling, strug. I mean, s- the fact we were calling it content shows how crappy the past. Yes, you know, yeah. the The name that you call what comes out of a cyst. Uh, maybe we should stop calling <laughs> movies and and books that. Uh, two things prompted this episode, Jack. It was can, and then it was like the Warner Brothers like comic book like uh extravaganza like it, those two things basically mean the same thing in hollywood now yeah the the you know warner is finally getting in uh on dc after a lot of false starts just when interest seems to be completely flagging on superheroes but here we are entirely <laughs> yes just when everyone is completely exhausted by cg outfits of cartoon characters uh they're finally getting in the game again but before we get into that Let's take care of the business. Everyone, thank you so much for listening to us, whether it's on our public feed or at patreon.com slash struggle session or sesh.plus or struggle session.substack.com. Lots of places. Lots of places, but we really appreciate your support. We got a couple of really great episodes uh, coming up. Mm -hmm. We're we're going to have Matt Boers and Ben Clarkson of the hit comic Justice Wars. And this is no joke, Jack. It is a hit comic ass. Swear to God, it's one of the greatest comic books I've ever read in my entire life. I don't even want to get into describing how completely, you know, insane this is. <laughs> but there is literally a quote on the cover from Peter Chung, the creator of Eon Flux. And the quote basically says that this comic book kind of freaked him out. Uh, so uh, 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 that's, you know, that's the level of praise. quality. Uh, that we're bringing to you you here on struggle session so please check out justice warriors before that and on that episode we'll be talking about cops of the future yes all all the you know from demolition man to riddick equilibrium logan's run scanner darkly phil k dick all that good shit we're going to be talking about all the various cop portrayals of police officers in future because i was thinking about it jack and lots of other genres right Police are always the good guys. Police mm-hmm. are always presented fairly well, except in science fiction. In science fiction, they're almost always like 
villains, um, sociopaths, the sword of like a authoritarian regime. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So we'll be talking about that. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that episode. And yeah, Justice Warriors uh, uh, is a must check out. Uh, uh, one other big announcement that I know a lot of people have been waiting for. Awa has heard your <laughs> prayers. <laughs> Bugman is back mm -hmm. and he will be back on struggle session. We will finish the story, finish the legacy. We will finish the Skywalker saga mm -hmm. with Rise of, is it Rise of the Skywalker? Yes, it's called The Rise of the okay. No, The Rise of Skywalker. The Rise of Skywalker. The Rise of Sky I have never gotten the name right. Not even once. I well, don't it's think. But nonsensical. It's a nonsensical name. So, you know. But I'm excited for it. We'll be talking about it with Bugman. We will be mm -hmm. completing our commentary set, which, Jack, those things, I think they've our old episodes, which you can get on patreon.com slash struggle session or sesh.plus or struggle session.substack.com. Those commentaries with Bug, where we go through the Star Wars saga, including the prequels, especially the prequels. Those are historical documents. Mm -hmm. That is when the tide turned. That is when things change. It is true. You can listen through those, and there is a changing of an era, even as you listen to the episodes. You know, we're really fired up in some of the early ones. And then as public opinion soured on Star Wars, you can see us kind of calm down commensurately as the world became more sane. I wouldn't say calm down. I would say taking kind of like a victory lap mm. is more is more the vibe. <laughs> it's more my vibe. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to finish the saga um, with maybe the best one of the sequel trilogy. We'll talk about it when I we get to so. it. I think so. I think so. We'll get to it though. Jack, what you got going on? God, well, you know, I, I have a, a book coming out um, yes. in September, which is sort of the big headline. Uh, if you haven't ordered a copy yet, uh, get your copy of Kill the Rich, written by me and Kate Shapiro, uh, former guest of this show. Um, I, I think it's a really fun book. It's a political satire thriller. I do think that fans of Struggle Session uh, will really enjoy it. And you can get a signed copy if you pre-order. It's as easy as going to Kill the Rich book. Dot com and you can get a signed copy by me and Kate uh, that will come out in September. Um, awesome. You know, and beyond that, I, I've done a couple appearances. I appeared on Vanderpump Robs, which is a Vanderpump Rules watch show to talk about the nightmares therein. Um, Jack, I have not caught up on Vanderpump Rules yet, but that is like the hottest show on TV right now. It's like it's actually beating wrestling in the ratings wow. now. Like Lisa Vanderpump is the best promoter <laughs> of the year. Cause I haven't caught up. I just know there's lots of cheating and stuff going on, but it's like this specific season what's has funny, been hot. What's funny is it is also wrestling, but people still believe it's real. You know what I mean? Like this is wrestling yeah. <laughs> in elementary school, but it's all adults watching it, you know, and still <laughs> believing, you know, that there's no kayfabe involved and sort of like having the cognitive uh, uh, disconnect that, you know, these people are not aware that they're on a television show. Uh, but I didn't watch the new episode. We watched an old classic episode called It's Not About the Spaghetti, uh, where there's a blowout argument about someone taking someone else's spaghetti to the bathroom and doing lines of it, uh, where the <laughs> spaghetti might have been a stand in for talking about something else uh, but uh. go check that out at Vanderpump <laughs> Robs uh, and there's also a short interview I did with Kate Shapiro um, on uh, doing it with Mike Sachs which is a great podcast worth checking out and uh, tracking down that episode um, and as I'm trying to do more long form writing uh, and step away from you know the mental illness creating machine on Twitter uh, I've launched a, a, a bit of a sub stack where I'm putting up short fiction some poetry even and uh, writing about Los Angeles. I'm also going to maybe do some little mini check-ins about stuff I'm watching. Uh, and that's at www.jack.lol. Uh, go sign up for that uh, as I try to build a mailing list uh, that makes it so I don't ever have to look at Twitter again for the rest of my life. Sweet, sweet. Uh, I recently got to appear on a really fun podcast. It's called, it's called Fangs for the Memories. Hmm. Fangs, like vampire fangs. Sure. And it's a rewatch podcast of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, one of my favorite shows of all time, maybe maybe number one at times. And Jack, when I tell you, and of course, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, created by Joss Whedon, as we all know, and Jack, I'm sure it comes as no surprise to you as the two episodes I watched had a lot of weird issues about like consent 
and lots of hang-ups about sexuality, specifically teenage sexuality. Like, you know, we must we must uh, uh, partake in some death of the author, uh, and certainly when there's already been a death of the career of the author. Yes. Oh, they're trying to bring him back. Oh, they're some of them are trying to bring. I mean, look, we we might get into it eventually, but James Gunn and Joss Whedon are friends. They're buddies. Yeah, Joss Whedon got James Gunn his job in Marvel. So I would not be shocked to see the favor return eventually. But that's what the rumor and hearsay. Mm -hmm. I can't stand by that. That's allegedly. That's all allegedly. Um, but this ep the two episodes we, we watched, one was this fantasy where, and Jack, this, Jack, uh, Jack, this won't shock you at all, um, where a high school nerd cast a spell that made him super popular, famous, rich and also got him uh and also he was able to have sex with uh any woman he wanted one of um, joss's many perfect nuts one of his many yeah. many perfect nut writings and then there was another the other episode was about a frat house where the walls made you come and also and buffy got trapped with her boyfriend and they were in a phantom like zone like a void just fucking nonstop, and that was that was the plot of the episode. Um, so yes, uh, interesting stuff. We had a lot of fun on Fangs for the memories. I don't think I've convinced Jack to check out Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, 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 uh. but I guarantee it's it's a good time. It regardless of some of that stuff. It's the worst season though. That's let's get on to the main event trailers, mm. baby. I think we gotta start off with the probably the one that people have been anticipating the most and talking mm -hmm. about the most. And that is, of course, The Flash. Sure. Yes, the official trailer is out. And you, we've already talked about uh, Ezra Miller's issues, them being a real-life terror and Joker. Warner Brothers is standing by them in part, and I swear to God, this is what they've been saying, because the movie is just so good. That's what we keep hearing, right? We keep hearing this is like Citizen Kane or something, and so you must you must uh, uh, forgive uh, uh, Ezra Miller's transgressions. I really don't want to undersell this. There have been several articles dropped saying this movie is the shit. This this producer, that director, they've seen the movie and it's amazing. So I want to be clear. They, I've never heard this exact type of hype for a superhero movie, mm -hmm. like maybe ever, like before, like months and months ahead of the, before, well before the movie is finished. They're telling us like this movie is so good. Like, we can excuse a few I films. mean, I, I do think it's funny that the big press rollout for a superhero movie is simply, this one's actually good. <laughs> they didn't say it about Shazam. They didn't say it about Black <laughs> Panther. That's not what they were saying about Ant-Man when Ant-Man was not coming out. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we will check out the trailer for The Flash. The Flash. So, Jack. I mean, there's stuff in it that I'm definitely into seeing sort of despite myself you know my feeling about the flash um is that i i think and this might be you know being you know uh shirking my duties as a host of this podcast but i think this is going to be the last superhero movie i see i feel like it's like a nice bookend for me it's kind of like the people who were marvel freaks who stopped watching after endgame i'm like this feels like it is kind of nicely closing off anything that i ever liked about the dc cinematic universe and so yeah i think there's some annoying stuff in this you know i don't like let's get nuts um but you know I like seeing Ben Affleck Batman. I like seeing General Zod. Uh, and it feels like this is this will be a nice way to close the chapter on ever seeing any of these types of movies ever again for me. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple of things that seemed interesting. Like some the action scenes with Batman, which Ben Affleck said they were good. Like he's been saved for like a year. Oh, this is the best stuff I did. So like there will be my, probably five to ten exciting minutes, but... Looking at this movie, it's like 
this goofy ass time travel plot and the and knowing that the whole purpose was so that they could fire Henry Cavill or something like that. Like it's so bizarre. And the, and the fact that there are going to reset the entire universe anyway, like this is literally like a lame duck movie. Like yeah. n- there is no there's not there's not following up any of the characters from this it's so, it's such a strange thing to come out and it, it's clearly not going to be the type of story that's going to be satisfying on its own because i already know what the ending is he goes yeah. he's going to decide that oh well i'm going to change things back to how they were that that's clearly what the movie is going to be so yeah. i don't know like why this credits movie with chris pine superman or whatever the fuck you know honestly yes. i i i just am like you know, this feels like it'll close the book kind of nicely for me. But also, you know, a, a thing that is makes me wary is that this is based on Flashpoint, which sucked. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> one of these ones where it's like, I, like the, I read that comic and it was not good, you know? So I, I don't know. I definitely am going to see it. My interest is peaked more than any other superhero trailer I've seen I don't know, since the Zack Snyder Justice League. Um, and But, you know, but I think this will be the last of it for me. Yeah, so one funny thing about this movie in particular is that they return, clearly, like the climax of this movie is the like climax of Man of Steel yeah. or something like, like Or maybe that's where he comes to in the beginning. Like that could be like the where things change or something like that. Like whatever Metropolis is destroyed by Zod is kind of what it feels like to me. But it does seem like they're sort of jumping into Snyder versus DC in a very weird way. I don't know. Seems- in order to get rid of it, they're jumping to the movie that because it only made what eight hundred million dollars or whatever, made them entirely change their plans and mess with the fact they felt like Man of Steel because it didn't make as much money as the MCU that they needed to change up their game plan. And now in the final movie, uh, well, I guess besides Blue Beetle, which the trailer dropped for as well, the final movie they're going back to Man of Steel. The villain in this movie is the villain from Man of Steel. What is the point of this? Well, like, I mean, it's also it they is this to, weird what? vestige zombie movie, like you were saying, you know, that was made before James Con- James Gunn came on. Oh, you had it right the first time. <laughs> um, it was made before James Gunn came on to completely, you know, change everything into the, you know, a, a clone of the Marvel Universe. So I don't know. There's stuff that definitely piques my interest, but I, I I don't think it'll probably be as good as everyone's saying, but it probably will be good on the bell curve of superhero movies. So, um, you know, I guess we're also getting what I wasn't sure we would get another one. I think the last one they considered it was, you know, the, uh, a failure, but that's also because, you know, Warner Brothers decided to release all their hugely high budget movies directly to piracy platforms for a year. Um, but yeah, we're going to be getting Godzilla X, Godzilla X Kong. Is this the first X? X? Is this the first X we've had in a movie title? But yes, uh, Godzilla you know, in this form, I know we've had X and there's a movie called X, but the the sort of ant replacement for an ampersand. Uh, anyway, here we are. Godzilla, Kong, the new empire. What gets me excited about this trailer is we are seeing a return to the absolutely idiotic hollow earth, which I love so much from Godzilla versus Kong. <clears throat> Godzilla vs. Kong, you know, I, I didn't love the first couple Godzillas that Legendary did, uh, but Godzilla vs. Kong did bring me on board with its just, like, total weird continuity and doubling down into just weird... The, the Hollow Earth has me on board for these movies. You know, that there is... In Godzilla's universe now, the Earth is hollow and there's like a Pandora of floating islands inside of it. Uh, I think I'm I'm ready uh, for whatever they have coming next. If my life depended on it, I could not tell you a single thing that has happened in any of these monster mo- monster universe movies. I have no clue what is going on in them. I, I assume I'll watch this one, but I will not remember it I afterwards. couldn't tell you what happens maybe in Godzilla or King of the Monsters, uh, except that Godzilla, we barely saw Godzilla, and King of the Monsters, 
you know, had some of the other ones in it. But Godzilla vs. Kong, I think is, uh, yeah, I think... It had that good haymaker. It, had, it, yeah. it did have, it had a, little, a couple of things. It had a nice, it had a nice big fight. We have Hollow Earth. Um, I'm on board for the legendary monster verse at this point. Moving on to a trailer. Oh, and Jack, this one just dropped, like, basically while we were recording this episode. People are talking about it right now. I'm going in cold. People Me have been too. talking about this. People have been talking about this movie for a while. Um, the live action version of The Little Mermaid. People do not like how this movie looks. I, I, I'm, we're going to take a look. We're finally getting the full trailer, but we have to reset. The reason these movie these remakes keep getting made is because each of them makes like a billion dollars. Like they make so much money. The like the live action Lion King is one of the most successful movies ever made, and I'm sure no one like I never heard anybody talking about it. It's actually what people think Avatar is. Like these this run of Disney live action movies that have no cultural impact but still make uh, oodles and oodles of money. Why does Flounder look like a a horror character? Why is Flounder <laughs> just like completely repugnant to look at? Um, you know, I get that this is live action Little Mermaid, uh, but they didn't hire a real fish. I mean, it's a digital character. <laughs> like, why doesn't he look like a cartoon? You know what I mean? Like, they they've... It's a hyper real flounder. It's such an odd choice to make. The only visually legible thing in the trailer is the Disney castle. Because the, <laughs> like, the articles have started to come out where when people complain about how dark something is, they're telling people that, oh, it's because you need a new TV. Mm. That is not true. That's victim blaming. That's victim blaming to say buy yes. a new TV. <laughs> And the only thing that really kind of stands out is Melissa McCarthy as like the villain. But frankly, I thought that she was that character was always black. <laughs> like, because I mean, they made Ariel black. It's like, a fully I'm race like, swapped Little Mermaid. Yeah, yeah, they fully <laughs> race swapped it. Like they 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 gave us one, and they, then they took one. Of us. But that <laughs> I, what, what like, stands out for me is that I think Flounder will give kids nightmares. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they made that decision. Well, speaking of nightmares, there was a video game trailer yeah. that freaked me out that yeah. I think we need to watch and talk about for a second. And I'm sure a lot of people listening already did see it, but it's called Unrecord, mm -hmm. and it's an upcoming uh, video game. When you first see the video, like the little thumbnail, you'll think it's like real, it's something real. It, it's very high fidelity graphic. I'm not entirely sure that the trailer is entirely the game, but it's hyper realistic uh, gun battles. And it looks really good and really fun to play, except for the fact that you're playing a cop gunning down like indigents. I watched this trailer, you know, and I do agree that like the first 20 seconds of it, I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Even though, of course, it is bizarre that the thing is based off of like the kind of footage we see from, you know, cops killing black people. Like it looks yes, like it's, it's uh, exactly that. It it's, looks, there is the exact aesthetic. It's of that. body cam footage. And I'm like, that yeah. is weird to begin with. But I will say that once the game actually sort of gets into the part that seems like game gameplay it doesn't seem that different of a game like it's kind of just a first person shooter with shaky cam in those early moments when the hand is kind of unmoored and it and like it's shaking around and everything like that but that's when we actually get into the shooting it looks like the gun comes up to the middle of the screen to be like a crosshair and you're shooting people in what looks like a counter-strike level you know what i mean like i i ultimately those first 20 seconds, you're like, damn, this is wild. And then it kind of just devolves into really looking like Call of Duty to me or something. Like, I, I, I really... Yeah, but pistol only. Pistol only Call of Duty where you're shooting homeless people, you know, in a warehouse. You know, like, I, I, I don't know. Once it got into looking like a game and feeling like a game, you know, those first couple seconds, you're like, wow, this looks crazy. How could it be a game? And then it gets into, the, like, the actual gameplay part, and you're like, oh, just by being like every other fucking first-person shooter game. So I, I don't know. I, 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 
I, I am a little turned off by the aesthetic of it. Um, and and I don't even I don't even think the gameplay seems all that exciting to me. There's some horror elements which people have been speculating and maybe the trailer suggests somewhat. I'd still be interested in it if the cop thing is just like the kind of setup or whatever. But I'm hoping but it is an interesting concept and, and the idea of like a body cam game. But you don't have to be a cop. Make it like a horror game or something. Yeah, I don't know. It was. Uh, it doesn't look all that exciting to me once I watch the full trailer. A, a franchise is ending, and it is one of our most beloved and bizarre franchises. A movie series that shouldn't be a franchise that has changed, I, I would say immeasurably, from what it first was into something that is kind of unreplicatable. It's like nothing else. It's a bunch of you know, so we're talking about Fast 10. Uh, the the street racers have become secret agent guys, I guess. Uh, and and this last one uh, is going to be a two-parter, which is what we love in our franchises. And uh, yeah, Fast 10. Okay, Vin. And I, I like Jason Momoa as an addition too. I think Jason Fuck. Momoa is a, a, a perfect fit for the franchise and blowing up the the Vatican. I mean, that's that's one of these ones where you're like, well, that's that's a villain who we can you know side with a little bit. You know, Jack, I have a confession to make. I have not watched the last couple of Fast. I think I think I, I've missed at least one, maybe two. I just wasn't that interested in him. I am going to be day one for this uh, one. Uh, that uh, looked dope. It really, it seemed like it scaled things back in the right way. There's a plot that seems to make some sense. Now, when you, as the trailer moves along, it just becomes clear that this is every actor that's ever been in the movie, even ones that have been dead coming back to have fights that probably ha don't have a lot of reason to happen. But I'm in. It seemed very exciting. It seemed more like what the what the series should have been after Fast Five. I think they just got too big after a while. But it looked nice. And again, and Jack, as you said, Jason Momoa, perfect fit, mm -hmm. perfect villain. The Rock should have been a one and done. The next movie should have been Jason. They Momoa learned their lesson. In. They learned their lesson with The Rock trying to go off and freelance. You know, you see Statham is back in this one, not The Rock. I I'm not a fan of Statham because he he. I mean, he's a, he killed Han. He killed Han, and uh, then, uh, of course, Han came back. But then he killed a bunch of people in that movie, and now he's a good guy again. That's one thing I do not like. It's, it's very it's the, WWE. It's the Vegeta phenomenon. I like the Vegeta phenomenon of always bringing the villains on to be part of your, your merry band after defeating them. That's the thing. Sorry, I don't think it counts as a Vegeta. His story is was that he was actually never a villain in for real. Mm. If you watch the movie, I forget which movie has this revelation. Maybe it was the the spinoff, but he was actually never a bad guy. He was forced into it. Yeah, it was the spinoff with The Rock. You Hobbs and Shaw, where you find out that Shaw was actually like being blackmailed or something into being an international <laughs> domestic terrorist. He was never actually a bad guy. Well, Hobbs and Shaw is not quite canon but i guess it is i uh, guess it counts so. but but let's... i feel like it's it's the sort of persona non grata of the fast franchise shall we shall we take the poison and and do the marvels might as well might as well it feels like it you know like you said we're kind of wrapping up this superhero thing let's watch the last few trailers because jack i actually and Jack, it's so funny because I, for whatever reason, whenever I go to Google News, they always try to send me to like the right wing nerd sites, I guess, because Google knows I don't like Marvel and Disney, but they think nah, it's because uh, like, uh. I'm a right winger. And like they're, they they keep trying to make these clip bait headlines about how Brie Larson wants to quit the Marvels because she's jealous of it featuring like two other women of color for some reason. So they're trying to like split the base uh, ahead of time on this movie. We'll see though. This is really the most TV looking Marvel. I think that they're, they've put out. There's parts of the Spider-Man movie that look worse than TV. You know, the last, the one where with the three Spider-Man like that, that looked like absolute garbage. But I, what I don't like about this thing, it really annoys me. It's kind of a nerdy thing to be annoyed about. But I hate the fact that Nick Fury is like a scroll or something. Yeah. One of the Nick Furies in like half the movies is just is Ben Middles Mendelssohn. 
pretending to be a black man. <laughs> I don't like that at all. <laughs> is this Nick Fury the scroll Nick Fury or the real Nick Fury? I literally do not know. I literally do not care, I guess, yes. All the, except for the weirdness uh, uh, of a white guy you know, disguised um, as a black guy. Another Dr. Manhattan, I guess. Yes. Uh, another Dr. Manhattan. I, I don't know. This Like, when we're here in the house, we're, you know, at Kamala Khan's house, that just looks so fucking ABC to me. And this stuff with the dog, the cat, I mean, it just looks so like one of these Disney Plus shows. I really can't even sort of tell the difference anymore. Um, and I... Whenever I see these things, I always wonder, what do, like, normal people think when they see these absolutely bizarre, complicated uh, uh, comic book crossover plots in these movies? It's like a three-way Freaky Friday uh, with the three uh, Marvels, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel. Wait a minute. Like, all of them have been called Miss Marvel at one point. Them yeah, we have not. three Miss Marvels at this and, point. And two of them have been Captain... Monica Rambeau, when I was growing up, she was Captain Marvel. The black woman was... I, I've complained about it on the show before. I don't want to get into it. But the two Captain Marvels, two Miss Marvels, another Miss Marvel. In this team-up movie, it's not clear, right, quite clear who the villains are in the trailers. And this is a, this is a thing that has driven me crazy about all the superhero trailers recently. They, they, they never show, like, who the villain is. So, like, what's the point? They just keep making these more and more TV type plots and don't really give you a reason to go to the movie theaters but and i don't and obviously I, i'm not super interested in the mcu but like i would think they are at least trying to follow up on captain marvel which was a massive success but this feels like a disney they brought it down to like the disney plus level instead of ramping uh, things up similarly to how ant-man went from like a heist movie to like a star wars movie there's no real consistency in, the, in each individual film, you know, series, like every movie ends up being bizarrely different. Same thing with Thor, same thing with Captain America. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea of these being deeply interconnected, you know, I think was kind of working for them. It never appealed to me that much. But those ones kind of pre-end game did all feel like they were sort of cohesive. This is it's become like comics like it is too yeah. fucking confusing. You know, I, I can't you're supposed to watch everything on Disney Plus And I don't even think like normal people again. We're just prognosticating about normal people. Are, is anyone yeah. normal anymore? Um, but I mean, it's <laughs> worth talking about because this it, they, I mean, I like seeing a billion multi-billion dollar corporations fail. So the, <laughs> when they put out these bizarre trailers, I do want to get that perspective in there. So that's the only reason it's worth talking about just because I like if I were the studio head and I was making Captain Marvel 2 and I had all the Marvels, what I would do is I would make a movie about all of them fighting some guy. i not that there was a sort of unique excitement around that first couple waves of Marvel. It, it was kind of, I didn't like it, but it was unlike anything that had been attempted in film before. And now it's just so overcomplicated. And I think these movies are always going to make money. People will go out to see something with the red Marvel logo. But I, I think the days of them being the, the main cultural behemoth are starting to be on the wane. All right, let's do one more. I had a couple of, you know, high fluting ones. Bo, Bo is afraid. I saw it. Idol. Stinky. We'll have. Oh, is it bad? I thought so. There's some moments. That, I mean, it's maybe worth seeing, but man, that's really a like Ari Aster had to shoot every single line of his big psychology, you know, major shitty script. <laughs> I've heard almost nothing but bad things about it. Uh, hate to see it. There's some stuff at the beginning of it that actually feels kind of like Southland Tales, which I love. Like at the start of the movie, I was like, am I going to like Bo is Afraid? But it is so fucking indulgent and overlong and annoying. Yeah. All right. Well, I did have some highfalutin stuff. I I had uh, the trailer for The Idol, the uh, Sam Levinson mm -hmm. thing. But then I realized... I did not know that he was a Nepo baby, Jack. I did not know. Oh, that yeah. One of the big ones. I did not because I just have not paid any attention to it and I will continue to do so. Mm -hmm. um, so for the let, but we will watch another show that's appearing on Max, I believe will be the name of it now. It's no longer HBO Max. It's just 
Just Max. I'm the David Zaslav defender, I guess, because I've said for a long time, I don't think they should have diluted the HBO brand from turning it. It's not TV. It's HBO into it's TV. All right. But we will be watching a TV show that is a spinoff of a movie. Matt Reeves, Batman. A movie that doesn't count anymore, apparently, but whatever. But the fact that the Batman is not a part of the DCU and they're starting a new DCU that's going to have another Batman, obviously, because they're not going to get Robert Pattinson to be in like five movies. I don't think my boy is interested in that sort of thing, but they are building a Batman the Batman universe, Matt Reeves franchise that just won't be connected to the other Batman franchise that they have planned. Anyway, here is the spinoff, The Penguin. <laughs> Sopranos font. Oh, my God. <laughs> they do use Sopranos font and they tell you now in production. The Sopranos font is too over the top. They are trying to convince you that this movie about the penguin, the guy who has trick umbrellas. Uh, they attacks Batman with is going to be like the Sopranos. They do have a great cast, though. They have an amazing cast, all right? And the thing that makes me think about is how much I hate how all these great actors are stuck in this comic book <laughs> crap. I know. Even when I was a kid, my dream was not like, all right, I really want Al Pacino and Robert De Niro to be in all my superhero uh -uh. movies. No, I just wanted, like, this type of act, like B-movie actors that look like the characters. I didn't want famous actors. I wanted it to be, you know, fun. I don't think Colin Farrell needs to be play doing the Penguin TV series. Man. He could be doing more, even though he's great, but my God, he was just in The Banshees of Inner Sherry, one of the greatest movies you'll ever see. And now it's, you know, HBO Max series, The Penguin. And it's just, it's constant. So many people, so many actors getting caught up in the Disney Plus or the HBO Max, or the fucking Mandalorian shit. It just, it drives me insane. I hate how many great, talented people are in awful, meaningless content. Can can we fucking grow up at some point? You know what I mean? Like, can we as a generation maybe put aside the toys we liked when we were little kids? Like, when you go to the movies, does it have to look like a toy commercial from the 90s with fucking Transformers and Barbie and Spider-Man? Like, can we at some point, like, put aside the play toys? Like, some of it is fine. We had the Joker. It made a billion dollars. You're making another one. Okay, do we also need the pink one? And then are we also going to get the Riddler? Is Riddler and fucking Calendar Man and all of them uh, are going to uh, be super dour, like prestige series. Like which one is going to be the superhero Breaking Bad? Uh, uh, Mr. Freeze uh, is probably going to be the, su the superhero Breaking Bad. Yeah. I think. Good Lord. Well, you know, uh, uh, I think that you started off this episode sort of saying, you know, oh, it looks like movies. Uh, there's going to be good movies this year. I'm like, which ones? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did hold off the sympathizer. Um, by yeah, only maybe the sympathizer. Folks, it looks cool. You go, go ahead and watch that one on your own. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. But folks, thank you so much for listening to us. Make sure to check us out. Patreon.com slash Struggle Session or sesh.plus or Struggle Session. That's Substack.com. Thank you so much for listening. Hit us up with a voicemail on sesh.show. Peace. Later.